Hello Emilio. Hello JP. Welcome to the Dermoscopy Excellence Digital Training. Let's start from the clinical. Are you ready for the scalp? Some data highlighting a significantly worse survival for acral melanoma. Here again you make the diagnosis because of the arborized investors sharply in focus. So this is our destiny my friends. If someone is connecting right now Yes. Then they are saying, okay, let's stop seeing this stupid <laughs> course. <laughs> But then if you look at the tables and you see, you see the reason why. And I know on the face is a lazy guy. Morphologically, dermatoscopically. <laughs> Bravo, my president. Eh? Ragazzi, ragazzi, can you hear me? Do, yes. you want, do you want to give me an E kiss on the scalp? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> uh, what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Come on, only the best journal in the world. <laughs> ciao Sebi, ciao Sebi. Hi guys, so, hi Misa, hi Constantino. Hello hi. my hi. friends, how are you? Hello to everybody from Nigeria, Algeria, Uzbekistan, Poland, Lo London, Armenia, Spain, Albania, Portugal, Somalia, should I continue, UK, Romania, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Australia. 
Oh, wow, man. my God, Turkey, Belgium, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Very good, very good. So today we are ready for another very nice episode, my friends. A very nice episode speaking about something uh, we covered already, by the way, uh, the previous season, right? Uh, somehow, yes. Somehow. Partly. Somehow, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. Should we start with the question of the week, ragazzi? Of course, of course. Yes. Uh -huh. As compared to other melanoma types, acral melanoma has a better prognosis, similar prognosis or worse prognosis. Yes. So the, thing start, is, eh? the thing is that in the intro, like the dermoscopy excellence, yes. the and answer. The the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't know. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. What's going on here? Worst prognosis is the, uh, the, 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 the winner, but very, 72%. Ah, great. Yeah. Emilio, can you confirm this? Well, I can. I can. It, uh, it appears that uh, it does have a, a little bit worse prognosis if you adjust uh, with uh, other, uh, other prognostic factors, but this is in fact, a small difference. It's not at the magnitude of, uh, of the discussion we had last week for melanoma of the scalp, uh, in which the difference is really significant. Here, it appears to be just a little bit uh, worse uh, if you adjust for breast low thickness. The problem is that unfortunately, many acral melanomas are diagnosed late, and uh, this is the main reason why many patients with acral melanoma have uh, not a good outcome. So this makes our discussion today very so, interesting. So did you prepare a paper of the week concerning acral melanoma? Sebastiano? <laughs> yes. Paper of the week, yes. So the truth is that, uh, by the way, there is a que question in the Q&A, how you can have access to previous meetings. Of course, you can. You can watch all the episodes of the Happy Hour in, uh, in our uh, channel in YouTube. You just have to sus subscribe in the channel and everything is available there. Yes. So the paper of, of this week is, in fact, not a, a new paper. But let's say since we discuss about acral melanoma, uh, this is, let's say, a very important starting point. Uh, so uh, may, we will remember together uh, as soon as Sebastiano allows me to share my screen. Uh, we will uh, remember together the bra checklist. <laughs> Jeppe, do you still remember that evening in that restaurant that we uh, you do that yes. we came up with the acronym in uh, Reggio Emilia? Yes. 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 <laughs> My, my, my beloved uh, times in Reggio Emilia. Yes, come on. They were very productive, I would say. Very productive. What, what we said when we were in Reggio Emilia was the following. In Reggio Emilia, you can only work. There is nothing else to do. <laughs> and, and which was the best job you can do in Reggio Emilia? Uh, 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 beside drinking? Yes. <laughs> the best profession. The best profession. <laughs> Oh, police, police. Policeman. <laughs> Policeman in Reggio Emilia. Yeah. You have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, unrestricted access to knowledge is offered only by the journal with, uh, uh, which is on Jeppy's T-shirt today, yeah, DPC. But this paper uh, was uh, published, let's say, uh, a little bit earlier, so it was published in the British Journal, I think, uh, seven or eight years uh, ago. And the main idea here that I would like just to remind you is that uh, what, proposed, what was proposed then at, at that time uh, was that uh, in acral, uh, for uh, diagnosing acral melanoma, we have to consider not only the, uh, the presence of the parallel reach pattern, which was something very well known already at that era, but also the overall symmetry of the lesion, the presence of asymmetry of structures or features, or the presence of 
of classic melanoma criteria also should be taken into account. This was, uh, let's say at that moment, the brand new thing, uh, because until then uh, we were mainly focusing, trying to answer the question, if this is a parallel faro pattern, which in this example is easy to say yes, or if we can see a parallel reach pattern, which in this case, it's quite easy to say yes. So this was the main rule. Parallel faro benign, parallel ridge malignant, which of course makes sense and it's 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 correct. The point is that often, quite often in acral lesions, uh, we don't see uh, neither a faro nor a ridge pattern. This is an example. The next lesion is another example, and in these occasions when we don't see uh, um, neither a faro or a ridge pattern, then uh, we had no guide on how we should proceed with our, with our evaluation. So to assess lesions that do not display neither a ridge nor a faro pattern, uh, a suggestion provided by our uh, Japanese colleagues was that they should be assessed based on the size. So when lesions are small, smaller than seven, let's say, uh, millimeters, then this is a sign for, ben for a benign lesion and the opposite, when the lesion is large, then, uh, then this is suspicious. So for example, in the lesions that I showed you earlier, uh, if, we, if we are based on the size, it means that the lesion on the left is suspicious and the lesion on the right uh, is not suspicious because it's, it's small. So the point is that according to the BRAF checklist, uh, this is more or less the opposite in, in, in the previous example, because uh, here, uh, we can see that the lesion on the right is the one that, although small, already displays asymmetry of, in the distribution of structures and colors, while the lesion on the left is more or less uh, symmetric. So based on this, the lesion on the right should be suspicious and not the lesion on the left. Uh, it's important to underline that, of course, parallel reach pattern is very suspicious for melanoma almost always. I say almost because we have the exception of congenital nephi. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe also hemorrhage sometimes acquires a pattern that looks like a parallel ridge. In general, parallel ridge pattern is of course suspicious, but uh, we should remember that many melanomas, acral melanomas, not one or two or 5%, many acral melanomas, do not display a parallel ridge pattern. And here in this panel, you can see several examples of acral melanoma, which are, in my view, more or less feasible to diagnose, if not easy, at least feasible to diagnose. Uh, although none of them displays a parallel ridge pattern. In, in this study, which was very, very, uh, uh, very close to the, the other study that we did, at that era, we found that up to 50% of acral melanomas might not display a parallel ridge pattern. So uh, obviously when we see a lesion with clear cut melanoma criteria, then I mean, it doesn't really matter at all if we can see or not a parallel ridge pattern and we should consider the lesion as suspicious for melanoma. In practice, to summarize all this information provided in the paper, practically when we see a parallel ridge pattern, of course, it is suspicious. We just have to exclude uh, congenital nevus. If we're speaking about the child, we have to exclude the hemorrhage. And then it's, it's always suspicious for melanoma. That's, that's for sure. And there is no, uh, no, 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 no doubt about it. And also the opposite. A parallel faro pattern in a symmetric lesion or a fibrillar pattern in a symmetric lesion is suggestive of a nevus. That's clear cut. The interesting point comes when in lesions like this one, uh, we can see maybe in the lower part of the lesion uh, a parallel faro lines. And therefore, here there is the risk to, uh, to, to mislead us towards the interpretation of a benign lesion, although overall the lesion is quite asymmetric in terms of distribution of colors. There is a, an irregular blotch in the right part so we should take into account everything, okay. and not, not only uh, the question furrows or ridges. Again, here, fibrillar pattern, if, we, if I have to assess the pattern, but who cares? The point is that the lesion is very ugly, very asymmetric. There is irregular blotch. 
so it's suspicious. One more example, no, faro, no rich pattern, but an easy to diagnose melanoma if you take into consideration everything. And one of the best examples that we very frequently show, uh, a clear cut parallel faro line pattern in the left part. So this could mislead us to diagnose the lesion as a nebus, but taking into account the symmetry and the irregular blotch in the right part, then we can diagnose this lesion as a melanoma. Finally, the last point that I would like to make very quickly, which was not included in that paper, but uh, it's quite relevant, is that on acral sites, since we speak about acral melanoma, uh, there is also not only the lentiginous subtype that develops, but also another type of acral melanoma, which is much more aggressive biologically and is, and is quite different morphologically. So it does not display a parallel rich pattern and sometimes it does not display pigmentation at all. So it's hypopigmented, amelanotic often and grows quite quickly. And this is an example of, of one of these uh, terrible fast growing acral uh, melanomas with just a little bit of pigmentation. And these are probably, this is part of the explanation for the bad prognosis of acral melanoma because the, the lentiginous subtype is a slow growing melanoma subtype. But there are also these tumors which are often ulcerated, non-pigmented and grow quite aggressively and probably uh, they are responsible for the bad prognosis of acral melanoma. I just conclude with two uh, examples. On the left-hand side, the classic acral lentiginous melanoma growing slowly for years. Look at this one. It's so ugly clinically. It has expanded uh, in, in a large part of the soul, but it's still very, very thin. And it, it was growing for many years. In contrast, the one on the right-hand side, fast-growing tumor, hypopigmented, or even non-pigmented uh, very frequently with a completely different uh, pattern. Look at this one. On the, on the right-hand side, there is just ulceration and crust and also a small focus of pigmentation with irregular dots. But imagine if this small focus of pigmentation would not be there, then how difficult it would be to diagnose this acral melanoma, which is only ulcerated. So we should be aware of this second phase of acral melanoma, which is really a challenge to diagnose and a real uh, trap that we can fall uh, and misdiagnose it either as an ulcer or a, 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 a resisting viral wart and so on. Uh, and uh, this could be really uh, influencing negatively the prognosis. And that was it. More or less. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. I would add, so then then maybe very quickly, we add a few cases for discussion and then we go for the questions. Um, just let me share my screen. And here we are. So this is the first question for you. Uh, I would like to know, Sebi, if this is, in your view, more on the side of a nevus or more on the side of a melanoma. Let's have a look. Older patient. Uh, exactly, yeah. The patient is not very young, by the way. And this is, let's see. Okay, so the great majority, 72, for melanoma. So why we are thinking about melanoma? For, in my view, for always, as usually, for a combination of criteria. First of all, the age of the patient, which is not very, uh, very young anymore, is 70 or something. Um, second, it's a large lesion, which is also important. Third, what we see basically is a variation of the parallel ridge pattern. You know? So it's also very nice to uh, uh, underline the fact that uh, uh, nevi show parallel furrow pattern because usually the nests of melanocytes are underlying in, uh, in conjunction with the furrows. Eh? are located uh, at the dermopidemal junction uh, in conjunction to, under the furrows, while the single nest melanocytes in melanoma in, in proliferation or in melanoma in situ is uh, 
spreading everywhere, but for an optical reason, we see more pigmentation on the ridges compared to the furrows, okay? So here you have this kind of structureless uh, homogeneous pigmentation. So I agree, this is a melanoma and should be excised. Second case, second case, what do you think, nevus or melanoma? Professor, professor, can I say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an easy case. Yeah, 93% nevus. You can see a beautiful parallel furrow pattern in the context of a clear cut, a symmetric lesion. So as, as Emilio was uh, uh, mentioning, it's important to judge the uh, presence of symmetry uh, or asymmetry within a lesion. Okay, so we are now in the context of, of the opposite side. So uh, we don't see a parallel ridge pattern. Uh, we see a classic parallel furrow pattern in the con context of a symmetric lesion. So clear cut benign. What about the next one? Nevus or melanoma? A. Don't be influenced by the fact mm. that we showed some uh, very strange melanomas. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bene. It's not. It's not so successful. The majority is not very high, like in the previous case, because this is in some way a lesion which is giving bad, giving bad feelings, right? But if you think uh, on the morphologic side, you can see clearly a parallel furrow pattern. By the way, a variation of the parallel furrow pattern, with, which is the lattice-like pattern. So furrows and perpendicular lines uh, uh, designing a kind of uh, uh, network in some way, right? So here, again, we are in the con context of a symmetric lesion with typical benign pattern. Okay. That's, That's an observation, Zeppi, if you may go to the previous circuits. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we we stop the votation for a moment. We go to the first to the, to the previous one. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes it's a, a little bit difficult to differentiate between parallel ridges and parallel furrows. The edges of the lesion will always show you. So look at the edges if you can show with your arrow. Yes. Like this is where you will see where the pigmentation is located. Yes, exactly. This is very important that you underline this concept. Look at the periphery. Don't look in the center of the lesion. Yes. Because usually in the center you see confounding uh, structures and it's not so easy. Yeah. Good. What about the next one? Let's see. Okay. Nevus melanoma. Let's see, let's see. Vote, vote. As soon as this lesion, uh, we, if, uh, we finish the discussion, we will also discuss one of the questions because it's related, in my view, to this lesion. Okay, okay. Okay, let's have a look, Sebi. Okay, Nevus 67. Uh, uh, so we started with a beautiful one, 93, then 72, then now 67. It's again... <laughs> We are, let's say, worsening the scenario, but still we are in the context of a, of a typical pattern, a typical fibrillar pattern. Why it's typical? Because it's a symmetric lesion. So symmetry plus fibrillar. So the lines are perpendicular um, compared to the, to the skin markings. And therefore, we are we are uh, in in the in the context of a clearly benign pattern, so we can um, avoid the excision of this lesion. Okay. Um, so uh, before you proceed to the next one for the fibrillar pattern, uh, two two uh, very quick things. One is that it's a pattern that we see almost exclusively on the soles. Uh, it's extremely rare on the palms, and therefore it's quite suspicious to see a fibrillar pattern on the palms. And second, there, there is a question by Sheen uh, saying that uh, we know that the fibrillar pattern very frequently is in fact an optical illusion, let's say. In fact, it's a parallel furrow pattern. And if you change the angle of your dermatoscope, you can practically transform it into uh, a parallel furrow pattern, which is true, of course, in many cases. So Chin wonders if we don't need the final F of the graph since fibrillar is faro anyhow, you just have to change the angle. I would say that there is a point here, of course, but it's not that always 
you can do it. I mean, sometimes even if you change the angle of your dermatoscope, uh, the fibrillar pattern is, still remains a fibrillar pattern. So, yeah, yeah. very good. Okay. good. okay, so next one, let's have a look to the next one. So again, nevus against melanoma. What do you think about this lesion here? <laughs> this is brand new stuff. Eh? Brand new stuff. The mitochondria, the mitochondria. <laughs> okay, sixty-three percent. You see, we are declining slowly. <laughs> yes. But still, 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 democracy wins. Still, the majority wins. Uh, this is again uh, uh, a, a, a variation of a typical benign pattern, which which is uh, which was not originally described by the Japanese uh, colleagues. Uh, Emilio is going to publish. No, it's already published, right? Yes, but not out. Not out. Okay. So this this uh, this is the typical finding of dermal acral nevi. Eh? Uh, and you see this kind of brown wavy lines in which, you know, you have this uh, remnants of pigmentation within uh, otherwise non-pigmented intradermal nevus, these kind of uh, lines which are a little bit angular, a little bit uh, curved, uh, looking like a wave. Uh, again, metaphors are coming into the game. The, the, funny, yeah. the funny story here, of course, is that uh, we were showing uh, this pattern in a couple of uh, online mainly uh, lectures during the last year and uh, before the publication so uh, we were uh, we did not we had not decided yet which name to give to this pattern because I mean it's not easy to find names so we invited for participants to suggest names and one of them I remember clearly suggested the name mitochondrion like pattern which of course we did not adopt in the paper, but I have to admit that I like it. Yes, I like it. it's catchy. It's catchy, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Okay, but let's go on with the final couple of cases. Okay, we have now a forty-one-year-old man, and as you can see here, there is a quite a heavily pigmented lesion, and you have to decide again if it's a nevus or a melanoma. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how things are going. Let's see how things are going. Bene, okay, Sabine. Okay, Nevus 68. Wow, wow, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. By the way, if I ask myself, or if I ask you, you my, my friends, do you see a benign, a typical benign pattern here? No, no, uh, there is no typical mm. benign pattern, but the lesion is overall symmetric in terms symmetric. of... Symmetric, exactly. But I would like in this case to take into consideration the, the, Jap the suggestion made by the Japanese colleagues. When you see a lesion do, that do not show typical benign pattern, which is larger, seven millimeter, please consider excision because you never know. Eh? And in this case, the lesion was excised and histopathologically, it was diagnosed as an acral nevus. But in the real practice, in the real life, this lesion was decided to be excised in order to exclude melanoma because it was a large lesion not showing a typical benign pattern. Okay, uh, so in some way, we need this kind of uh, additions to the rules. So the, the size of the lesion and finally, with this Final case, you have to tell me if you think it's a nevus or a melanoma. Come on, here we we, yeah. we will get it. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure as well. Oh my god, 97%. <laughs> and you see how strong is the morphology here, which is made of asymmetry. Eh? a symmetry of colors and structures. But if I ask you, do you see a parallel pattern? You have to say yes, right? And the pattern is this. Parallel. 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 Yeah. That's, that's for sure. So it's in case of Emilio. Yes. So it's very important what, what Emilio was showing before. So we should not forget 
the principle of symmetry versus asymmetry, which is a very guiding, important guiding rule uh, for uh, for deciding if a lesion should be accessed or not. In fact, this was a melanoma in situ. Okay, so at the end of the day, uh, again, uh, very simple rules here. Uh, of course, the parallel rich pattern, uh, the presence of typically benign patterns. If you don't see typically benign patterns, uh, uh, judge the uh, size of the lesion. If it's a large lesion, consider excision. And finally, consider excision, uh, even in the case if you, see, if you see typical benign patterns, but in the context of an asymmetric uh, lesion in terms of colors and structures. Bene. Very nice. We do have a lot of questions. Let's yes. start because there are many. Are there established risk factors for acral indigenous melanoma in dark skin? No. Uh, we only know that the number uh, of uh, acral melanomas are always the same, independently from the let's say the ethnic the ethnic uh, uh, type of the skin. So if we are living in Asia or in Africa or in uh, Vienna or in uh, North Carolina, the number the, the probability to get an acromelanoma is the same. So you already answered the second question, which is: Are acral melanomas more common in dark skin compared to Caucasians, or simply more common in dark skin relative to other types of melanoma? So the second is the correct. Second, exactly. Wonderful. They they do not have uh, uh, superficial spreading melanoma, so melanoma co connected to the sun damage. Mm -hmm. The most difficult question to answer is the next one: Are there any clues to diagnose a hypopigmented? and even worse, non-pigmented uh, uh, acral melanoma, like the ones I showed. Well, uh, <laughs> Emilius, I'm just sharing a paper. Sure. We, so, because I saw the question. So this is a non-pigmented part. Can you see my screen? No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure, you did already, you did. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, the only clue that we found was a chaotic distribution of uh, vessels. You can see here how uh, yeah. an acral hemangioma yeah. looks compared to the amelanotic part of a melanoma, which was chaotic distribution of vessels, like a chaotic parallel ridge pattern of vessels. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Never seen that one. Uh -huh. Uh, another point is that this type of, of acral amelanotic melanoma is quite frequently uh, ulcerated, much more frequently as compared to acral antigenous melanoma. And often, unfortunately, it becomes a little bit hyperkeratotic. Uh, yes. The point is, the point is, uh, in my view, the main differential diagnosis here is a wart or a callus or uh, an ulcer. ulcer. That you, that you judge to be oh, yeah. traumatic or microtraumatic and so on. So when, whenever you are in, the, in this context and you apply the proper treatment and you see that the, re, the lesion is resistant to any kind of treatments you perform, then maybe it's a good idea to make sure and to make a biopsy. A couple of questions about the fibrillar pattern. First, uh, uh, in, in BRAF, uh, fibrillar takes one point minus, yes, but 7.6% but of fibrillar nevi are actually melanoma. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of data, George, you are referring to. I wouldn't agree that 6.7.6% uh, of nevi with fibrillar pattern are melanomas. I would agree that there are melanomas with a fibrillar pattern, of course, but uh, the point is that they are asymmetric. I showed already one uh, a melanoma with a fibrillar pattern, but it was not a symmetric distribution. The only asterisk would be the one I said on the palms. A fibrillar on the palms is, in my view, always something uh, suspicious. Well, there is something maybe we can add to the question, to the point of the fibrillar pattern. Since yes. we cannot judge, eh? if, you are, if you are looking at a lesion with a fibrillar pattern, you cannot know if originally the lesion was with a showing a parallel furrow pattern or a parallel ridge pattern. 
So in some way, the fibrillar pattern is, co is confounding. It's a confounding factor. Again here, in my view, the size matters. The size of the lesion matters. So I don't feel completely confident with a large lesion showing parallel fibrillar pattern, you know? But with a small lesion, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, the probability that this is a melanoma is very, very low. Mm -hmm. And of course, Chin repeats again, uh, which is correct, of course, that in lesions with fibrillar pattern, if you change the angle of your uh, dermatoscope, then you might understand that it in fact corresponds to a faro pattern and this helps a lot. Uh, again, about fibrillar pattern, uh, Vitor says that I heard in the EADV that fibrillar pattern with fibrils that do not anchor in parallel pharos could be malignant. That's a good point, Vitor. This is, uh, there is a very nice uh, webcast uh, in the IDS website by Masaru Tanaka, which underlines precisely this point that, in fact, usually in a fibrillar pattern, the fibrils, all the fibrils start from a pharo while in, uh, in melanomas with a fibrillar pattern, this is not the case. So this might be an additional point to take into consideration for fibrillars. Uh, the rule of seven millimeter is for acquired acral lesion and not for congenital. Of course, of course, of course. Nothing is for congenital. Um, acral reed nevus. There is a question about acral reed nevus. Maybe here Nisa would give a, a quick answer because she published recently a, a series with 10, uh, 15. Is there a specific pattern? Uh, the pigmentation generally involves both the ridges and the furrows, and we can also see some radial lines uh, as we observed in uh, non globus site. Uh, and uh, the interesting point is the fibrillar yeah. pattern also observed in acral reed nevus, but not uh, in pressure yeah. uh, prone sites non-pressure uh, bearing sites. Uh, that was an interesting yeah. observation with Emilios and I. Uh, and yeah. um, it really looks uh, very different from uh, uh, acral nevus. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Can acral melanoma originate from a nevus? Well, very rarely, very rarely, much more rarely as compared to superficial spreading melanoma of the trunk. Um, vascularized parallel reach pattern is a clue for non-pigmented acral melanoma, uh, Fezal it's, says. It's uh, a paper that I saw, and I think Fezal was, it was a part of a paper that was yeah. also from Turkey with a similar observation. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, there yeah. is a, a link for the BRAF checklist. Wonderful. Uh, for the paper, I mean. Um, in association of trauma with acral melanoma confirmed only with subbanqual melanoma and why are melanomas on the fingers of the hand so rare in comparison with acral melanomas on the feet? Um, so yes, the association for uh, between trauma and accelerated uh, growth is confirmed only for subbanqual melanoma and not for acral. Uh, now, why melanomas on the fingers are much more rare as compared to the soles, to the toes and the soles? I don't no, know. Idea. Yes. No, idea. Idea? no idea. No idea. We cannot say anything. Of course, it's easy to say. Maybe it's the, it's the trauma, but um, I, we we only can say no idea. No. Uh, wonderful. Uh, how about melanomas presenting as plantar warts? We spoke about it. Uh, Coma-like is another suggestion for the wavy lines pattern. Correct. Uh, and uh, wow, we did everything. Everything, everything, everything. Wow, everything. Wow. 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 wow, wow, wow. Ragazzi, what about the next uh, session section of the next? Yeah. I think you have to show us something. You. 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 Me. <laughs> Me. Yes. Okay. okay. Why? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so then let me do it. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to show you for a moment this wonderful collection uh, of, uh, of devices provided by, uh, by one of the sponsors of Happy Hour, which is Camfield. 
uh, starting from uh, the Optima, the, the wonderful magnifier that uh, we said a few things uh, last week. This week, I will say just a few more things about the second yeah. device, which yeah. is the handheld dermatoscope practically, Luminis, which in fact is much more than a handheld dermatoscope. Uh, here, what I find very interesting is this, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you, if you know it, guys. I mean, this um, uh, possibility that you have to uh, increase the distance of examination. So you don't have to, to, to get your face so close uh, to the dermatoscope as uh, as compared to what you are used to. And this distance is somehow considered patient friendly, of course, and obviously, especially for particular anatomic sites, more sensitive anatomic sites. So this is very nice. And of course, full spectrum lighting, uh, quality precision optics, obviously toggling between polarized and non-polarized light. And there is also a nice uh, magnet lock uh, to uh, to in to change uh, examination cones, so that's a very modern, uh, wonderful, powerful device provided by uh, Canfield for as a handheld dermatoscope. Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful. Sebi, what's next? The B no. Wow. Oh, that was wow. all right. Wow. You know, Sebi was asking me to do this uh, on my drum set, you know? Uh, but I don't know why he decided to put it here. <laughs> <laughs> Sebi is the director. He decides whatever he likes. He does not have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Facebook group. Facebook, Facebook. Pizza. Facebook. <laughs> Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, let's start with the first case. It's an easy looking, but a challenging case as always. <laughs> so I shared this case uh, last year. The patient is an 86 year old female and it's a big lesion, and she was aware of the lesion for the last six months. Mm. Now she's too old. I think this should be older than six months. Yeah. And here is the dermatoscope. Mm. We have brown structureless areas, white lines, and here are some clots and coiled vessels. Again, you can see here the coiled vessels white strange lines, brown eccentric structure, this area and some scale. So you want to tell us that this is not a melanoma? <laughs> You're trying no, to tell us, yes. You're trying to <laughs> tell us. Just yeah. wait. Growing <laughs> is that, it's brown. definitely not a melanoma. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait and see. And we have brown areas, some radial lines again, pink structure, areas. And overall features. So, what's your diagnosis? Sabino? Well, if this is a BCC, this is the first. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. People, people are voting. People are voting. Yeah. 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 Well. So, Bowen the majority Bowen. vote for Bowens and 26 for melanoma, 5% for porpora, BCC, and collision. Okay. Now let's see the histopathology. Do you have any idea? Um, With this hematoxylin azone sections? Yeah. My pathologist told me that this is a poroma. And I said that it is impossible. Come on. My only uh, preferential diagnosis here is melanoma. It's impossible. It should be melanoma. And she said, no, it's poroma. And I said, please make some immunohistochemical stainings for melanoma, like S100, HMMB45. 
And now we see that there is diffuse melanin positivity here. Mm -hmm. And T67 proliferation index was high and PREM was positive. Mm. So she now considered, yeah, it's a melanoma. But then she made some additional immunohistochemical uh, stainings and unlike melanistic hyperchromatic cell groups, more hypochromatic poroid cells groups were observed in the epithelium and SOX10 staining was not observed in these areas. And here, cytokeratin cocktails were positive. And finally, we made a diagnosis of combined tumor of aberrant cytokeratin expressed lentiginous melanoma and poroma. So this is extremely rare. <laughs> this is unique. Denisa, only yeah. to you it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exceptional. <laughs> but it was so interesting that uh, my pathologist said that this is poroma, and I said, please perform immunohistochemical uh, stainings for melanoma. And after immunohistochemistry, she could find out the melanoma. So if she sign out this as poroma, it will be catastrophic for the patient. So we clinicians are really very important. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. So yeah. it's always, always important. We have to repeat this many times. It's always important to take pictures of what we are going to excise because otherwise we cannot challenge our pathologists, you know? Yeah. Important, yeah. But was it a melanoma in situ or an, an invasive? No, no, no. It wasn't in situ. Breast of thickness was around 1.6 millimeter. And there were mitosis and ulceration. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Incredible. And now the second Very case. Good. It's an easy one. <laughs> so uh, here, uh, the patient is uh, 56 years old, and he said that uh, this lesion is there uh, for 10 years, but it's, the size is doubled for the last one year. So, what do you think it is? The lesion has a history of 10 years, but the size doubled in the last one year. Right. People are holding, I guess. People yes. are holding melanoma combined nevus, blue nevus, compound nevus. Okay. So what do you think, JP? Well, I think it's... it's uh, uh, Wait a moment. Okay. Yeah, okay. Combined. Okay, I, go, I go with combined. 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 Okay. And also my preferential here was combined news, but uh, due to the growth uh, history at the age of 56, I wasn't so confident and the size was a big one and I decided to excise it. And his pathology was consistent with compound news. There was no blue news in, uh, in the sections and it's okay because uh, in dark skin types, uh, we can observe uh, here with the VRAF algorithm, uh, it's, it's just uh, minus one point. So it's not a melanoma with the VRAF uh, algorithm. Yeah. And uh, when I ask, uh, we had lots of uh, answers and uh, I like uh, Harold's answer the most. And uh, he said that uh, symmetric parallel, uh, parallel pattern at the periphery structures in the center. Dermatoscopy says news, two features. However, scream, be careful. First, it's large. Second, it's evolving. Do you trust the dermatoscopy enough to dismiss the patient? The answer should be no. Of course, given the history and the appearance, a biopsy is needed even if the pattern is benign, uh, as we did. And uh, I would like to show you a patient uh, who has a very similar lesion on the back. Uh, you can see blue 
structures in the center and reticular lines at the periphery. This is not a combined news. This is also a compound news. So in darker skin types, uh, the central part could be uh, bluish uh, and it's not a blue news. Uh, it can also be observed in compound news. Fantastic. Do you agree? Very good, yeah. Okay. Of course. Of so course. this is my last case and it's a quick case. Here's the dermatoscopy, the clinic, pink lesion. What do you think it is? <laughs> People mm -hmm. are voting. Yeah, but what was it? Patient is 45 old. years old. Show again, show again the image. The pigmented okay. part. There is a pigmented part, right? On top. Ulcer maybe, and there's an ulcerated part. So the structures part, uh, we have pink structures areas, ulceration, and you can see also a fiber sign here. Well, so uh, can we see the voting? Can we see the result of the voting? Results? Mm, no, it's it appears right. that... Um, results? No. No results? No results. But okay. I would say that this could be one of these cases of uh, of melanomas uh, that uh, we were discussing earlier. So non-pigmented, uh, somehow ulcerated, uh, vascular, uh, rich. Yeah, and also the, the, if this is pigment, this this also reinforces the. Yeah, the, and we, we have the clue here for melanoma uh, at the periphery. You can clearly see the parallel parallel rich pattern here. So uh, it was a melanoma, and breast of thickness was uh, 2.2 millimeter. Uh, I diagnosed the patient uh, seven years ago, and she's still living without any metastasis, which mm -hmm. is good for the patient because she's a young, young patient. And that was my last case. Wonderful. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Always. Sebastiano. It's uh, time for no voice, no sound. No sound. Um, okay. It's time for your demoscopy. Before, before you start, Constantinos, there is another nice comment by Fezal that growing a crying paroma should be handled carefully because there is a chance of transformation to porocarcinoma, uh, that's a, a good point. In adnexals in general, uh, uh, there is a possibility of transformation of a, of a benign adnexal to a malignant uh, in many adnexals. So that's something we should keep in mind. And uh, also, what's the difference between compound and combined nebus? Okay. Co say, say, Jeppe. Yeah, so a compound nimbus is a nimbus having a junctional component and a dermal component, so compound. Combined nimbus means that you have a, a, a nimbus composed by two cell populations. So, for example, blue nimbus and superficial congenital nimbus, or blue nimbus and Clark nimbus, or Spitz and Clark, and so on. So two types of niva combining together. Wonderful. Wonderful. Constantinos. So, uh, some cases and our case for medium muscle, of course. So, I have a couple of cases to discuss based on the topic. Male, 50 years old, presents with this new lesion on the soul. The patient is trustworthy. So, he says that this has been there for a couple of months. And this is the dermoscopy. Let's see what people think. Is this an evus, a melanoma, or something else? Emilios? You know how much I like these answers, sir? Eh? Yes, I vote for sometimes. I vote for sometimes. Sometimes. I vote for sometimes. <laughs> Nevus 44%, melanoma 41%, and other 15%. Well, mm. based on the graph checklist, this is definitely a, par a parallel ridge pattern. Ridge. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. this is highly suspicious for melanoma. However, histology showed nothing. 
nada, niente. Just mm. slight hyperkeratosis. Yes. Why was that? Because obviously it was an external pigmentation of something that during uh, the, uh, staying in the formal, it dissolved. So always keep in mind that external pigmentation can take the, the look of a parallel uh, ridge pattern because it's higher in the skin. So that's where the pigment goes. And it can be a very nice confounding factor yeah. for a melanoma. And maybe we can we can underline the fact that there are a couple of uh, differential diagnoses we have to consider when we are in front of a parallel ridge pattern. Of course, melanoma on one side, but also external pigmentation, as is the case here, and subcorneal hemorrhage. hemorrhage. And sometimes also tinea nigra. <laughs> yes, occasionally. Next case, just because Emilius was saying, this is the hand of a patient, and this has fibrillal pattern. And also, and, and also peas out of the pod. Yes, out of the pod. Out of the pod. <laughs> out of the, out pod. Of the pod. So, Sebi, I haven't uh, told you about this question. I just, no, 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 just dismiss it. We'll put it on the next one. Uh, but I, I want to show this case because there is one question that we need to ask, the fibrillal pattern on the hands. How old is the patient? And you can yeah. see my hand compared to, to a five-year-old. Yeah, good. Dismissed. So dismissed. Dismissed because of the age. Yes. Congenital nevus, no problem. Exactly. 48 years old, comes in for this bleeding lesion. Mm. This is clinical. And here, I just want to show that it is pend pendiculated, right? And this is the dermoscopy. Wow, impressive. Is this a melanoma, an acrine paroma, Barnes disease, or something else? Eh. Eh. I guess that we all agree that the lesion will be removed. Eh? Nobody really <laughs> wants to keep it there. <laughs> it will be removed. However, we can see here, I think the, the vast majority found it of acrine paroma, and you can see like the, the flower-like vessels here. It was a very nice example. And yes. Show them, show them. Uh, Costa, show, show the, the flowers. So here is a very nice example, and here as well. Like from a, from a common stem, blow the flowers. Yeah. And of course, you, we, we're never first to find these things. There was a case report of a, sing, of a similar case with a nice histology image. And final question before the eudermoscopy. 59-year-old woman, woman with a history of um, ALM on the soul with multiple relapses presents with this new lesion. This mm -hmm. is the lesion we're talking about. Well, but and what's going on with this, with this foot? Well, multiple what relapses, eh? Oh. Ah, multiple relapses, okay, okay. Multiple. Melanoma, yeah. So this is the dermoscopy. I don't think there's a question that this is a melanoma. Mm -hmm. However, the question is another one. The patient has arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy and non-epidermolytic palmoplantar keratoderma and ALM since 2009. Yeah. Family history, sister, breast cancer, mother, pancreas cancer, aunts, breast cancer, brain cancer, and GI cancer. All have origin from Milos Island and Will here. So, Sebi, bring up the question. What is the disease called? Is it Athens disease, Naxos disease, Paros disease, or Zepi's disease? <laughs> wow. wow. So, for a, few, for a few seconds, I'm owning a disease. <laughs> yes. Potentially. No, no, you, potentially. 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 <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Let's see. If people vote for you, then you got it. It's published. <laughs> no. No. Oh, oh. Uh, well, only 15%. Yeah. People, people vote correctly, though. And this was indeed a case of Naxos uh, disease. A uh, brief overview. It was unfortunately declared by another physician, Zeppi. Sorry about that. Uh, it's, it's a mutation in placoglobin, 17Q21 17, 17 mutation. And 
it has like a very bad prognosis because of cardiomyopathy. And to our favorite app is the game, is the quiz, is the educational material. It's all of those combined. Uteromoscopy. Two quick cases from uteromoscopy, acral lesions. This is a lesion on uh, the foot of a 43-year-old gentleman uh, been there for one year. And this is the demoscopy. And let's see what people will vote. Sebi? Okay. Is this a melanoma? Anivus? Well, is the melanoma or anivus? I think this is the question. Yeah. I see. Melanoma 66% and anivus 29%. And Sebi, would you like to, to do the analysis uh, of the breath? Well, no parallel parallel pattern, uh, quite an asymmetric lesion. In, in not in terms of symmetry uh, of shape, but in terms of uh, structures, because I see more globules bottom side than uh, upside, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, not totally agree. Well, and the 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 uteromoscopy crowd had exactly the same percentage, sixteen percent. That's incredible. Impressive. Yeah. So yeah. the majority is, is uh, let's say, uh, 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 showing a high inter-observer inter agreement. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. And the final case, also from the Udemoscopy app, of course, lower limb, 54-year-old female, during NIVA examination, this, this is the demoscopy. And what do people think this is? <clears throat> Yeah. 54 years of age, lower limb, so acral, yeah. Yes, acral, and the patient obviously was unaware, but we don't have a history of how long this uh, lesion has been there. Yeah. But it's definitely, definitely a non-specific non, non, uh, pattern. And ah, we, we have a tie. We have a tie. Yes. Seven thirty-six. Yeah, Very divided. Yeah. And fourteen percent for other also. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, Nisa, what would you say this is? Well, could it be a dot or something like that? No, I don't think Exogenous so. Exogenous pigmentation. Yeah, there, there's brown structures, fibrillar pattern, maybe news. Hmm. I. I also voted for Nevus as the vast majority of uh, people will be waiting for the histopathology. However, I, th I thought this was a really nice case. Thank you so much. Very good. Bravo. Fantastic. Wonderful. Fantastic. Wonderful. So we are approaching the end of the, se of, the, of the episode. But before that, I would like to share for a moment a few uh, notes about uh, this uh, uh, system provided by Aine. Uh, as you know, Aine is the uh, inventor of the, the Maroscope back in, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the 80s. And uh, not only they, uh, Aine provides beautiful uh, handle, the Maroscope, but also they provide a system to um, uh, uh, manage images. So whatever, uh, whatever the Maroscope you use, you can attach it to a um, to a, a smartphone to take pictures and then you send these images uh, to a server and here you have a system to, uh, to note uh, various uh, um, features and various uh, fields in order to, uh, to keep note of what you are seeing. So this is a way of uh, um, uh, trying not to waste time in, uh, uh, in, uh, in searching with folders and stuff with your images, but you can use uh, a cloud server to, uh, to have uh, your own database of images. Bene. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. Now, now it's time for it's Emilio. Time for for Emilio, not for Emilio. It's not for yeah. Emilio. It's no, no, for Emilio, Emilio showing what? Showing. Showing when you uh, when you stop sharing your screen. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Now <laughs> I will show. I will show. 
And Daniel Lopez gift for tonight. Okay, I'm very curious. Last Daniel Lopez gift for tonight, uh, related of course to last Sunday's scalp lesion session. And I, uh, I trust you, my friends, that you can you can do it. I really trust you. <laughs> I really trust you. Believe in it, and you will be able to do it. Yeah, okay. believe in it. It's okay. feasible. Feasible. Okay. Come on, it's feasible. Okay. Number BCC. one, come on. BCC. 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 Number two? Uh, melanoma. Melanoma. Number three? Uh, you can do it, you can do it. Set K or Nibus Sebaceous or? On a Nibus Sebaceous, what are, what are the developed? Trichoblastoma, trichoblastoma. And the other one? BCC. Syringoma, uh, syringocisto <laughs> adenoma papilliferum. Ah, number four? <laughs> Number five, number six, uh, uh, ugly. 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 So perfect. You were perfect. Yes. Just perfect. BCC, melanoma, sinigosis, adenoma, sepcare, Bowens. Okay, it was not the sepcare, but who cares? Uh, and uh, nevoid melanoma. Wow, quite, quite impressive. Thank you so much. Penelope, and guys, remember to send us your case because in a couple of episodes, we will devote an episode exclusively to the cases that you will send. You have already sent us and the ones that you will send us in the next weeks in this email address that you can see, uh, that you can see here. Actually, I'm so looking forward for that episode because, you know, yeah. seeing the way that each of us or each of you thinks like makes me think in a different way. So please send us your cases. We'll send an email uh, reminding so that you can send us your, your uh, cases in response. Like your, the cases that you like, whatever you want. Yeah. And we'll analyze them live. Like it's, it's one of us with his way of thinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. So thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> Where are you going? No way. Emilio, no. stay here, stay here, stay here. Stay here. Enough, but we finished. Stay here. No, we, we didn't finish. The last five cases, last five cases. We didn't finish. What else do we have to do? <laughs> eh, perfecto. Nobody goes away before the Kahoot. Eh, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, very complicated. Let's see. Let's okay. see. Okay. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay. Are you are you going to present us uh, difficult cases or easy cases? Well. <laughs> no, no, it's easy. In my view, it's easy. But let's see. Do you see the pin? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. What's the sound? Also the sound. Yes. Yes. Ah, that's nice. Hey. As always, don't worry if you get a message that shows that you cannot join. Once we start, you'll be able to. So five, four, three. Two, one, and by the way, it's working now, I think. Uh, people yeah, are it is, it is. Uh, yeah. somehow working. The, the number is increasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, let's start and the, the others will join immediately afterwards. Wonderful. Episode eight, guys, episode eight. Uh, it's a lot of really. Really Wonderful. Flies. So, acral. Do you like my two acral lesions? Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Dermoscopy. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. And question: Which is melanoma? None. One, two, or both. Ah, che bello, che bello. I, I, feel, so I feel very optimistic. I would be if I if I saw the entire leg of the right. 
And there is no scar of a melanoma. None. Correct. 85 were correct. None is a melanoma. What are both of them? Nevi. And Nevi. Yeah. A, a dermal nevus with a mitochondrion pattern on the left. <laughs> and the <a> blue nevus <laughs> looking like blue a blue nevus yes. on the right. <laughs> Very good. And Seb Kerr. Seb Kerr leads the, uh, leads the <laughs> body. Mm -hmm. the body. It's the second. <laughs> <laughs> Second case. Okay. Right, left again. Uh, on the right is the definitely an acral, acral lesion, right? <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, it's okay. So this is what you get with dermoscopy. Do you like it? I like it. Yeah. Wonderful. Beautiful. And the question is, which is melanoma? None. One, two, or both. One hundred thirty nine correct answers. Ninety, okay, ninety, ninety, ninety. Both, hey. both, both melanomas, of course. Huh? Nice photographs, in my view, of, yes. of two melanomas. Okay, yes. very good. Next one. Next one. Ah, first, Seb K remains. Uh, on the top with uh, 1930 points, followed by Albert. Next is the first question with no points for today, which is the following. The main variety of red wine from Burgundy is... <laughs> soir, soir. Pinot Noir, Pinot Soir, Pinot Noir, or Pinot Noir. I love your French accent. <laughs> Pascal would approve. <laughs> uh, of, course. You see? of course, of course, Pinot Noir. Wonderful. Very good. Next question. Twins again. Okay. Uh -huh. One mm -hmm. is on the face, one is in the genital area. Okay. okay. Dermoscopy. Very good. Okay. Nice, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Question. Which is seborrheic keratosis? N none. One, two, or both? Yes. Hey, that's interesting. I'm pretty sure the majority will vote correctly. I'm not so sure, but... Uh, but, you know, yeah. Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> well, me neither. Me neither. I, was, I would have voted for one. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I understand because let me tell you that the reason why I am sure that these both are seborrheic keratosis is that in, in both of these cases, <laughs> the lesions were excised. <laughs> By the way, the left uh, was looking like a BCC. BCC, quite a lot. Also clinically. Also yeah. clinically. The yeah. first one is patient. Yeah, yeah. Melanocanthoma. Eh? Sometimes melanocanthoma mm -hmm. is very heavily pigmented. Is, come on. Uh, really, really, really impossible. And the second one is, uh, you know... Uh, somehow, uh, maybe a little Looking bit clonal, a little bit clonal with uh, blue blue clouds, blue globules. By the way, guys, do do you know why, like in the pubal area, we, we get so often seborrheic keratosis? Like it's, it's quite. Not, oh, it's, it's not so often if you compare it to the trunk in which we have seborrheic keratosis in one hundred percent of people. <laughs> yeah, but if you compare it to the buttocks, mm. yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because they might be HPV induced, who knows? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, but Banu just wrote the HPV co infection. Could ah, be. Really? Yeah, could be. Wonderful. So, uh, what's happening here? I love my mama. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm with my mama. Mm. <laughs> Next one, twins again. Interesting in my view. Two scalps with two tiny lesions, erythematous, a little bit scaly, 
So uh, we know more or less which is our differential. And this is what we get clinically, uh, dermatoscopically. Mm -hmm. Look carefully. Details matter sometimes. And now my question is, AK or SCC? And here are the options. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. By the way, the majority of it. This is also another nice topic to discuss in one of the episodes. Yes. Unfortunately, only 18 people found that these were both early squ uh, squamous cell carcinomas developing on, of course, the background of actinic keratosis. One of the clues that we see here are the presence of small vessels, which are glomerular in the left, uh, left hand image and rather, uh, again, glomerular or maybe a few hairpin in the right hand image. And the presence of vessels is a clue for squamous cell carcinoma because in actinic keratosis, we don't expect to see vessels. Anyhow, this is a, a nice topic in my view and clinically very relevant how we can detect early squamous cell carcinoma on a cancerized field or in general on the background of actinic keratosis. What happens here? Soe is in the first place, followed by mm, Entrilli. Entrilli. Second question of the day with, without points, philosophy. Who said good people do not need laws to tell them to act responsibly? Don Corleone. Don Corleone. Don Corleone. Silvio Berlusconi. Don Zeppi Corleone. Don Zeppi Corleone. Eh, Lato, but JP, you, you are doing quite well. You got the same votes with uh, with two superstars, Don Corleone and Silvio Berlusconi. So that you are really, I mean, yeah. doing very well. <laughs> it's not. It's a nice saying, by the way. Huh? Good very people nice. don't need laws. I mean, they anyhow act responsibly. Mm. That's nice. That's a very big topic. <laughs> yes. Topic. Yes. Yes. Soy. Soy. Sorry, sorry. No, soy or S? I'm not sure. Anyway. Yeah. Wonderful. I, yeah, because here there were no points. Yeah. Last case, with points, of course, is this very interesting nodule on the scalp of a lady. Mm -hmm. uh, this is clinical. This is a wonderful dermatoscopic image. Wow. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And really didactic also because it's, the, the let's say, the prototype of, of, of this entity, which is which one? Is this a lymphoma, a medical cell carcinoma, melanoma, or animal type nevus? Animal type nevus, I love it. <laughs> it's looking like a, a animal type nevus. Is, oh. It's looking like a lymphoma. Okay. This is lymphoma. This is a wonderful example of a lymphoma with these uh, orange uh, patches, orange clots uh, that correspond to the dense lymphocytic infiltration that we see in, uh, in lymphoma. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Are we ready for the podium? Let's yes, see. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Number three. Timka. Timka. Brava. Number two. Trilly. And number one. <laughs> bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> mm. Now we want to see the face of. Mm. We need to. Yeah. Jeffy, your favorite one. Come on. Yeah. That's wonderful. Jeffy mm. <laughs> is so cute. Who is. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, Mariana, is it you, Mariana Messia, that uh, responded with laughs? Mariana? Eh, Mariana Messia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it could be, of course. Mariana Messia. So if you are. Mm -hmm. Jessica <laughs> Anna is, is writing four, four positions. She's, she's happy about the, the fourth. 
being the sorry who who Francesca is writing that she was the first, which is also a good result. Yes, yes, fourth is among among three hundred. Four is very good. Very nice, very nice, wonderful. So it looks like we cannot find, mm, but uh, doesn't matter. Hopefully. Let's say that the the win goes to Jeff. Because she was supporting. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mm, supporter, and definitely so you get the price, which was uh, a car. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was a kiss from Emilio's. Yes, yes. Va bene, ragazzi, ragazzi, bravi, bravi, bravi. I will miss you for the next seven days. Un bacione so a tutti. Un bacione a tutti. Thank you all. Thank you guys very much for being here. Bye bye. Thank you, Sebastiano. Bye, Sebi. Thank you, Sebastiano. Bye bye. Thank you.